How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to take a look at how to use Lifelink without actually having the connection over Wi-Fi. So this way you actually use this in, in a different way instead of being online all the time. And uh, I should have probably practiced this before. But anyways, let's get started. Okay, so before we actually get started with the iPhone part, I want to show you what I have here. What I have here. I have my MetaHuman, which is going to be the first test. Then we're going to do a test with a non-MetaHuman character. Now, behind the MetaHuman, you can see a video of myself that I loaded with this same system. We're going to talk about why I did that uh, in a little bit. But just to show you that everything we have here is just, you know, some... Uh, let me turn things on. Some lights. I have a camera. And uh, I have a camera that's... Uh, let me show you. Its focal length is 80. And I just have very flat lighting because I don't, I'm not going for cinematic here. This is just for the tutorial sake. Now, before we move into the iPhone part, I uh, just want to give some love to my man, JS Films. Uh, I actually watched his tutorial and I'm just going to add some things into what he did. So thanks, Jay, for putting that out. All right. So what you're seeing here is the iPhone trying to capture my face and me behind the camera, which is real fun. Um, I just want to show you how does it look. So what you're going to see in your uh, face app live link is you're going to go into settings and you're going to make sure that you have the record button enabled because if you don't, then uh, how are you going to record? That's all the things you need to do in order to do this. Make sure that's on, then you're just going to go back and make sure you calibrate before doing anything here and just press record just hit the record button it's that giant red button there and once you are done your recording will automatically be saved to your iphone so if i get out of this app and i go here into my let me browse on my phone uh, lifelink face in this case because the only thing that i have on this phone it takes and I have the latest take, which is the one from the video that you saw in the beginning. It's actually this one. Sorry if it looks a little bit blurry. All right. So as you can see here, I have all the things from my take. So I have this one right here is a video. And this one right here is a raw file. It's a CSV file. CSV file, you're going to see that's like an Excel file. That you can use with this system but these two are the ones that are of interest to us because we're going to be using the video and the csv file now how do you get these things out of here well if you're a mac user and you like itunes you can just connect your iphone to your mac and just download it as you usually would but because itunes is the program of the devil then what i do is i click and hold and i get this uh share and then I'm just going to share it into my drive. You can also, my drive's right here. You can also send it to your email. Um, I don't know what kind of email you use, but mine doesn't take 455 megabytes. So that's why I had to use my drive for this. You can alternately just connect to your computer and just do it that way. But the slate, which is the important one, is actually uh, very small. It's 1.4 megabytes. So you can send that over email. All right. And uh, I know my meta human got weird because um, while I was recording the other part, the live link was going on as well. Anyways, um, what we're going to do is we have both the video that I downloaded, as you can see, 433 megabytes, plus the slate, which uh, my computer recognizes an Excel file for some reason. I've looked it up online and uh, CSV is a format that is used a lot with Excel because I think it's a database format. But anyways, what I mean is this is the file that you're going to be able to drag into your computer to drive your MetaHuman without having to have LiveLink connected at the same time. So that's what's the most important thing is you can ask somebody. So and for me, this is what's really important. I can ask an actor to record himself and hopefully with an iPhone Almost everybody that I see nowadays has an iPhone, like every other person has an iPhone. 
So if the actor that I choose has an iPhone or maybe I can share my iPhone with him or her, then they can just record it and send it over to me. And I can just add it and uh, correct it inside of Unreal and all that. So this takes away the necessity of you having to be present and, and having to record this in real time. So this, this was a huge leap when I discovered this. It is great for me to uh, continue doing my short film this way. So before this actually works inside Unreal, you need to enable the plugin. So if you go to settings, uh, the usual plugins, and you just type face import. So I just type face info and this pops up. So lifelink face importer is the plugin that you want to turn on. Uh, just check it. It's going to ask you to restart. That's all you got to do. So after that, just go to where you have your uh, CSV file located and throw it inside your project. It's going to appear as a regular sequence. So your everyday sequence, there's nothing to it. Uh, the way that I got the video in here was to just right click. And as you can see, there is a media and just use uh, file media source instead of image media source, just use file media source and uh, just double click it and locate your path. And that is it. Once you locate your path, make sure that once it's in here, one of the things you need to do is make sure that it plays. So the way that you do that is if I go all the way down, uh, where is it? I'm sorry. So once you do that, make sure that you open media plate and make sure that you load it because it may, if, if it shows in black, that means it's not loaded or something. Just click on open and it will load instantly. So make sure that you open it first before doing anything. So I had to reset things to the default so I can show this part. So once you load the sequence, you can see that there is nothing going on here. You need to add a character to it. In this case, it's going to be our metahuman. But if you click on this drop down, you can see that it does have all the information that you need. So all the uh, blend shapes that we usually get with a character or with the metahuman are going to be here for you to use. And you're going to see that this actually works on characters that have been adapted for lifelink aside from the metahuman. So for this to work, uh, it doesn't work as it is. We have to actually add our metahuman. So we're going to add our metahuman here. And you're going to see that. Let me uncheck high controls. You're going to see all the controls. Now, as usual, for this to work, uh, you cannot have a control rig on or a face control board on. So I'm just going to get rid of these. There they go. And it still doesn't work. So what else do we need to do? We need to go into the blueprint, go here to details, and we have used AR kit face, same with the body. So this is kind of like the newish way of metahumans uh, doing the anim blueprint because it's already integrated into the metahuman blueprint. Now, after deleting the control rigs, you have to go here and you're going to see that you have like in my case, my name, iPhone, and over here, I do have live link up, but you see, there's something different about this. Instead of saying that your iPhone is connected as it usually does, it's saying that a sequence live link is connected. So actually my iPhone is not on. It's the sequence that is reading as part of live link. I don't know what kind of uh, voodoo they're having in the background, but this is just the way that I think it works. Uh, it's it's kind of tricking the system as if a live link is available. So that way, when you go into the blueprint of the metahuman, then you can go here into the ARKit phase subject, and it's here. So if I click on it, you can see that I can load it. However, there's still nothing going on. You have to click on use ARKit phase. So if I click there. You're going to see that my metahuman move his head. I'm kind of looking down, which is fine. Uh, but after that, then if I hit play, you can see that my metahuman starts talking and that is it. You can actually record this as a sequence. If you wanted to, you can bake this to control rig. If I right click and I go into actually, you have to go into phase bake to control rig. You can fake, uh, bake this to control rig to modify, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. 
But what I mean is this can be used as a sequence as if you were using Tech Recorder. So again, this is huge because it takes out the fact that we had to uh, use Lifelink, then load the source into Tech Recorder, then press record, then start doing your stuff. And I, I think that that was very cumbersome. So this helps a lot by allowing you to do this offline. It, for me, it's, it's very big. Now onto the second part is the reason why my MetaHuman animation from the beginning looked uh, a little bit better than my usual is because I was able to match it to my video behind me. Now you see my video behind me is actually not moving and that's because I have not loaded it into Sequencer. But once I do, then I can match my recording, which is exactly the same length as the MetaHuman animation. So that allows me to have a reference that I can use to correct the metahuman face. I'm going to have another video talking about why you should always do corrections. So why your animation is not looking amazing is, uh, I'm going to have a whole talk about that. So please stay tuned. There's going to be the video after this one. Now we have a reference that we can look at and that we can make corrections to our animation and make it look even better because it doesn't stop at just recording. There's always some work to do behind that. Now, how do I get this video to run here? I'm going to go into the outliner. I'm going to get this uh, reference video. I just load it. I'm going to throw it here. You're going to see that nothing happens. So nothing's going on. And we need this to be loaded in here. So if we go into the media, if we click here on the plus button, we go to media source and we click on reference, which is the video that I brought in. Now you can see that my video is right here and it's kind of starting to move. Uh, all I have to do is lengthen the whole thing all the way to the end. And you can see that they are exactly the same. And if you spot my face and the metahuman face, uh, let, let me put it like this so you can see it better. And if you see me scrolling, they move almost exactly the same. And this is by what I mean by you need to do some corrections all the time if you want to your animations to look awesome. The best thing about this is that I can see my face acting side by side with the metahuman, which if you were doing it the way that we used to do it before in Unreal Engine 4 and 5, you could not load this this way because you would just do lifelink it straight up to your computer. Maybe you just load your video later, but it would be a little bit messier. Now you can just have this and it's really cool for doing corrections after the fact. Now I do have an issue um, is if I press play sometimes now it's doing it. I don't know. Unreal is it's crazy sometimes. It was that if I press play, my metahuman would start, would start going, but the video wasn't going at the same time. So, but if I scrub, then the video and the metahuman would move. So if you encounter that problem, it means that the video hasn't loaded yet. So give it some time to load. Hopefully if you have your video in the same folder as the project, technically it should load faster. Right now it's loading fast for me, even though it's in another address. So again, I don't know what's going on. It's just being weird. But if you encounter this problem that it's not playing the video at the same time as the MetaHuman, then what you need to do is just scrub. While you're scrubbing, it will move at the same time as the MetaHuman. Now about correcting facial mocap, I'm going to talk about that in another video because otherwise this video is going to be too long. And I want to show this with a character that is not a MetaHuman to show you that you can do it with any character that is made for a uh, live link. All right. Now what we have here is a alien character that I was using for my other channel. Uh, I, I really need to start doing more content for that channel. But anyways, now this character follows the lifelink blend shape guide that you need to have in order for lifelink to work um, good uh, with your character. So just make sure that whoever does this follows the guidelines. They are um, there is documentation for that. I'm, I'm not the one that does the blend shape, so uh, I'm, I'm not going to be going through that. But just make sure that it has the lifelink blend shapes and you should be good to go. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to load our sequence, which I already have 
right here and the character just added itself i'm just going to delete this transform all right so i've loaded my sequence and we have our alien character now all we have to do is just like with the metahuman we need to add the alien character to this let me put the alien character a little bit more towards the light there you go all right so we're going to add the alien character to our sequence and again absolutely nothing is going on you can see that nothing is happening because what we need to do is we need to enable the blueprint that is driving the face motion of the alien to work with this now if we go back to content browser i do have a blueprint already made for alien if you don't know how to create an anim blueprint i'm going to leave a link in the description down below where i explain this to the detail so you can make one if you don't have one so i just double click the anim blueprint and is this thing right here so because i have alien made to use my motion capture and live link face at the same time this is the configuration that i have you can also have just one single thing if you are just working with the lifelink face. So in this case, as you can see, this has this already loaded, which is my slate. My slate has the iPhone name that I use. So I'm just gonna click here, make sure it compiles. Now, the other thing that you need to make sure of is that your character is using that animation blueprint. So I'm, I'm gonna load it here. And you're gonna see that his face actually changed. Now, if I go into sequencer, nothing is happening as usual. The reason why nothing is happening is because this is not a metahuman. I need to add a lifelink. All right, let me type it here. Lifelink skeletal animation component. So it's probably cut in half here, but you've seen me done several times just Click on add, search for live, and live link will pop up. There's live link controller, live link skeletal animation. This is the one you want to use. So once you click on it, now you're going to see that my character moves his face with my animation. Now, this character is not a metahuman, so maybe it doesn't have all the great motion that a metahuman has, but because it's meant for live link, it does work. Maybe your character doesn't have all the blend shapes that Lifelink requires, but if it has some, it will recognize this database from the CSV file and it will work. So what this means is you can actually use this with wherever character you want. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. As usual, thanks to my Patreon. They're the level two are always in a shout out on screen. You're seeing them right now. If you want to help the channel, there's a Patreon, there's a join button. Uh, just follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you want to see more updates about the short film. If not, then just go to Discord if you have any questions. I'll try to be there a little bit more often. I was just, I've been swamped with things to do. So uh, you can find me there if you have any questions. If not, then there's Kirk and there's a whole community that is it's willing to help you out. Uh, please stay tuned for that other video when I'm going to talk about uh, something really important regarding motion capture and everything that's been going on. And um, I'll see you in the next video.